Thank you very much. Um, before I start, has, when I say point and polygon lookups with vector tiles, has anyone ever attempted or done this before? Let's talk afterwards. One person. <laughs> Great. I thought it might have been world first. Apparently not. Um, yes, so th this is the who I am. These days I'm an independent web consultant slash freelance web developer. I've kind of come on a bit of a journey doing all kinds of data -y things, particularly open data -y things, data, 60, data 61 data -y things. Um, some picked up a lot of JavaScript along the way, and as I like to say, I married JavaScript about five years ago and I haven't looked back. Um, so this talk, point in polygons. So we start with a point. In this case, let's say a random address in Abbotsford in Melbourne. Um, we have some polygons, let's say some suburb boundaries, and we want to know which suburb is that address within. That is what a point in polygon lookup is. Are we all, we all good so far? OK, so there's a bunch of ways um, that we might solve this problem. I mean, it's a really classic problem. Just you run into it all the time. People need to know, you know, what electoral boundary is this address within, which statistical area, which state, which terror, what are they called, territorial authorities in New Zealand, something like that. Um, sorry? Which time zone? Which time zone, which country. Um, yeah, so if you've got access to a, a geo server somewhere, you might make a bunch of calls um, using WMS, the get feature info, I think it's called or WFS, get feature, spend a lot of time reading GeoServer documentation, which we all love, so especially the OJC, or well, the old OJC specs, looking forward to the new WFS. If you've got access to a PostGIS instance, you'll probably be using something like the st underscore within function, getting a few nods, done a lot of that. Um, ArcGIS Online is maybe an option that you would um, fall back to in certain situations. Uh, if your data is hosted on Mapbox, you might call tile query. Um, all of these work um, in their various contexts, but sometimes they're not the right solution. So, for instance, what if you can't run a geo server? Like, what if your environment is a small, very lightweight server, maybe something like on, on AWS Lambda that's going to spin up very quickly, not live very long? You haven't got time to install geo server, you've only got like 30 seconds. Um, maybe, yeah, it's, it's just an, not an option. Geo server can be kind of heavy, um, can take a while to install. Um, yeah, maybe you're just in an environment where that one's out. No WMS, no WFS. Um, or there's no budget. Uh, so that might rule out Mapbox or ArcGIS Online. Um, pretty common situation, no budget. Especially if you're doing like you know, millions of lookups, you're quickly going to run out of your available cents and dollars. Um, and you might be doing, yeah, just so many lookups that any kind of network um, requests are getting prohibitive, uh, your database would fall over. Um, it, yeah, the, I've run into situations where it, it just wasn't possible and I want to find alternatives. And then I discovered there was another way. And you'd be, whoops. Oh yes, sorry. Um, so there's another way, which I'm sure you've already guessed is gonna be vector tiles. Um, to back up to why we got to vector tiles, if we're doing a lot of point and polygon lookups, we're going to need something called a spatial index. And this is the bit where I kind of mumble and try and explain what a spatial index is, because it's something like an index, which is something like a catalog, which is, you know, it's got some like boxes and some dots, and I grabbed a whole bunch of images off the web to kind of hide the fact that I have no idea what a spatial index is. Uh, oh, well, spatial, that's a spatial, is that a spatial index? Um, uh, that turned up somewhere on, under spatial index on Esri's website, spatial index, spatial index. What is it I'm calling, my definition of spatial index is something that reduces the amount of brute force spatial searching we have to do so we don't need to like literally um, plow our way through say 40,000 um, statistical area ones in Australia or at least you know 500 suburbs or whatever. Not the actual definition of spatial index but I'm going with it. Um, so my spatial index that I'm using Martin Tomko backed me up on Twitter once and said, yeah, it's kind of a spatial index, is vector tiles. If you haven't been to my previous talks on vector tiles, ravioli is my preferred visual metaphor for vector tiles. Because if you look at a vector tile, it's kind of got this um, predetermined grid structure that we've imposed upon the world. And each little vector tile is like a little square packet of data um, 
that, that, that contains the, the, the raw vector information. And if you kind of squint a little bit, Raviolia are kind of the same thing, right? Um, there's a grid, they've got delicious data inside them. Uh, if we're going to use these to find our, the, the right polygon for a given address, then we'll just start with first finding the right tile. It's a really complex two-step process here. First, figure out which tile is going to contain the, the polygons uh, for your given address. Once you've got that tile, whoops, uh, then go digging around inside the tile for the tasty, tasty shrimp prawn um, or polygon in, in question. Um, first get the, the polygon, then figure out which uh, poly, uh, first get the tile, then figure out which polygon within the tile contains that information. And the really great thing is that this step is really fast because to calculate which tile uh, will contain our point is sort of an order of zero operation. It's um, just a straight little bit of maths. And this one, as you can see, in any given piece of ravioli, there's probably only one or two prawns, right? For any very small vector tile, there's probably only two or three vector uh, actual polygons. So here's an actual worked example. Uh, we're trying to figure out um, which school zone that house on the corner of those two roads lives within. So the school zones cover the whole of Victoria. There's you know, thousands and thousands of them. But once we cut it down to that individual uh, vector tile, which we work out quickly, um, so we, we first uh, do the calculation to figure out which vector tile surrounds that uh, house. And you might, oh, if I keep double clicking, um, once we zoom in on that vector tile, you notice that instead of hundreds of polygons to choose between, now we've only got three. It's either the one up here, or it's uh, this whole polygon, or it might be this little third polygon down here. So yeah, we're going to brute force it. We're going to brute force our way through all three polygons. <laughs> this is in polygon number one. OK, so we get polygon number one, and we'll probably call the turf library. Uh, nope, it's not. Is it in polygon number two? Yes, it is. OK, so in a lot of use cases, we're going to stop at that point. We don't have a need to exhaustively check every single uh, polygon if we know, for instance, that they don't overlap. Cool. Did everyone kind of get the overall methodology so far? Anyone need clarification? Cool. So let's look at some code. Like I said, I married JavaScript. Um, so the first step, uh, figure out which tile is it step number one, which tile is our point within. So we're just going to grab um, this library called Global Mercator with the really unhelpfully named function lunglet to Google, because it's quite an old library. Um, pass in our coordinates, and it is going to tell us the, um, sorry, we're passing the long lat, and it's going to tell us the x, y, and z that uniquely identify that vector tile. That was pretty easy. Now, it turns out there's actually a step 1b here, which I kind of skipped over before. Once we've identified the tile, we're actually going to have to get the tile. So in this um, version of our procedure, local lookups, uh, we'll use um, the VT2 GeoJSON library, which was produced by Mapbox and is now kind of somewhat unmaintained and so on. These things happen, but still works, um, mostly, sometimes, except when I tried to run it on RunKit and I didn't. Uh, I think it worked on Glitch, though, so that's good. Um, anyway, so we call that uh, passing our local MB tiles file. Pretty straightforward. Uh, the, the Z, X, and Y that we just got from the previous step, and it is going to give us back some sort of feature collection. Uh, that is a GeoJSON object with the features that the point was within. Great. Uh, now that we've got those, that feature collection, um, we're going to use TERF, which is a really, um, really great JavaScript geospatial library. And we're going to use the Boolean point in polygon function. So we'll pass in our lunglat and literally just uh, iterate over every feature, every feature within that vector tile uh, to find one that Matches really straightforward. And again, if you if you need to exhaustively um, look at every polygon, like in case they overlap or something, then instead of using find, you'd use filter. But find is faster because it'll stop at the first one. Um, as a server, God, I'm so bad at server diagrams. Like it's so ugly, I don't even want to look at this. Um, but basically, the the browser is making a request, and the server is going to 
uh, first figure out which tile in the MB tiles, and then which polygon, and send back information about the polygon. And to simplify that, I wrapped all of that up inside an npm package called query MB tiles. So you can find that on npmjs.com, and that'll um, sort of simplify you having to do that work yourself. And here's one in production. So this is Find My School, which I built for the Victorian government. Um, that's the way it works. So a user types in their address. So this user lives at 400 Burke Street, bang in the middle of Melbourne. Uh, they're looking for a secondary school, year 12. And it's going to make this call uh, to the server and eventually says they are zoned for university high school. Uh, and we had to load test this. And on a tiny, tiny little um, AWS instance, um, it uh, happily uh, could handle 1,200 requests a second, like actual network requests, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and if you want to play with it yourself, uh, I um, a while ago built a glitch instance. So yay, re real life use case for, for glitch. Um, and you can actually call that. So if you go to whichpostcode.glitch.me, look up POA, then you can find which Australian postcode um, a given latitude and longitude is. In this case, um, that uh, that lat long is within postcode 5341. And if we look at the code, that's down here. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what that code looks like on Git. OK. So that was like stage one. I thought it was pretty cool, all right? Local, um, local uh, point in polygon lookups using vector tiles. But then I had a realization. Maybe if that works in Node locally, there's not a lot about the process that actually relies on direct access to the file system. Couldn't we maybe do that from the browser? Do we even need a server? I love getting rid of servers. If I had my way, there'd be no server. No, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, <laughs> but I, I hate maintaining servers. Uh, I think there's so much overhead in that. So anything I can do without a server, it, I'm just so much happier. So remote lookups. Let's try doing this whole process without access to a file system, without having access to the whole MB tiles system locally. And the reason this works, like if you think about our three steps, step one, choose the correct tile. Step two, load the tile of disk. Step three, find the right polygon within the, the tile. Well, with remote lookups, step one and step three, uh, <laughs> that should be uh, step two. Step one and step two are exactly the same. It's only step 1b that we need to change. So instead of lo loading the tile locally off disk, we're now just going to fetch the tile off the internet somewhere uh, using HTTP. So let's just swap out that middle step. Um, we are still going to use the VT to GeoJSON library, but instead of passing it in the MB tiles file, this library helpfully can um, do remote fetching for us. So we just changed this one little bit, and now it's going to pull in a PBF file over the magic of the internet. Um, and the great thing about the way browsers cache stuff is if we ended up doing a bunch of requests to a, a small area very quickly that the browser will have cached all the relevant tiles, so it's actually going to be really fast. All of that's going to be happening directly in the browser. There's going to be no server requesting at all. Uh, so it's going to be way faster than, than something like you know, a WFS query for every individual request if for some reason the browser needs to make a lot of um, individual lookups. So um, turns out I wrapped up this piece of code in a different library called Query Remote Tiles, uh, which works kind of much as you would expect. Uh, you pass in the URL of where your tiles are, the longitude and latitude that you're looking up, a zoom level, layer name, and I can't even remember what the options do. Probably nothing useful. <laughs> um, and yeah, th th this is uh, an example of, of how um, that would work. And I've actually use this in a real uh, website as well. So this is something we built for the Australian Sports Commission. And it was actually really helpful, um, especially when you're like prototyping something. And, and OK, so I've got these, uh, the user clicks on a sports facility. And oh, gee, it'd be helpful to just know what local government area that sports facility is, is within. Maybe we hadn't planned ahead and we hadn't like pre-calculated that information. And it <laughs> turned out to be like, once I had this library in place, um, just so easy to just go and grab that little bit of information. Um, so uh, just today, I, I went and actually looked at the code. And like, this is actual code, so I haven't like, changed anything. Um, there's a bit up somewhere where it brings in the library. And we just do query long lat and pass in the location of the boundary uh, tiles that I'd uploaded somewhere um, for the local government area. And it does that look up on, uh, live on the fly. So yeah, actually, <laughs> like every time I look at it, I'm like, wow, that's un 
pointing polygon lookup supposed to be hard? Like, like once you've got vector tiles somewhere, it's like, oh, that's kind of, oh, that's like an easy problem now. So I can just look up any boundaries for anything, like electoral boundaries or whatever. And then you have this final realization, it's like, okay, so if I can do that hosting my own tiles, what part of that process required authentication or what part of it tied those tiles to me specifically? Um, maybe if I could do it without authentication, maybe I can do it on anybody's vector tiles? That's pretty nifty. So now I can do point in, point in polygon lookups on, uh, on polygons that um, people didn't even expect to be used this way. So let's say I wanted to do some electoral boundary lookups. Like I had a random location and I hypothetically found some electoral boundaries on the web on some hypothetical website that was called National Map. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the Terrier um, team uh, helpfully hosts a whole bunch of uh, vector tiles for all kinds of different national boundaries, statistical boundaries, electoral boundaries, all those kind of things. So we could just drop in into a, a little script here, um, uh, the location of where those tiles are, tiles.terio.io, ELB2019 is the electoral, like the federal electoral boundaries for 2019. Um, pass in a particular long lat, query it, and what's the result? Awesome, we run that script, and it's going to tell us that that particular longitude and latitude is within the electoral division of Isaacs. Uh, and some random statistics, because this is just extra attributes that exist on, on those boundaries. Um, so that's kind of cool, and that's, that's me done. The, the, um, point in polygon lookups with vector tiles. Any Here it comes. Oh, we did this back in 1983. It's old, old news. I, wasn't, I, wasn't <laughs> um, I was just wondering um, if you want to actually get the, the polygon out of that query and you've got a polygon that overlaps multiple tiles, do you have any way of like fixing or being able to get the complete geometry? Uh, yeah, so if you wanted to fetch the whole geometry uh, that's around at the point, yeah, I mean, it's obviously not going to work very well. Uh, just in the same way that trying to do the same thing with WFS many times doesn't work very well because what you thought was going to be a small polygon turns out to be the whole coastline of Australia and it's suddenly, you know, 400 meg download. Um, not off the top of my head, I mean, like, I can probably think of the same solutions that you can think of. Like, let's just go randomly looking at all the neighbouring polygons until we find one that doesn't, like, sorry, neighbouring tiles that doesn't contain bits of the polygon and then stitch them together and hope for the best. Um, no, it's a really constrained use case. You, you can identify the polygon. It's for cases where knowing the name of the postcode is what you want. Uh, if you want the geometry, uh, yeah, it's a whole separate use case. It's one of my key learnings of vector tiles over the years. You've got to know your use cases up front before you go down vector tiles for a specific solution. <laughs> Very often it turns out to be the wrong solution if the use case changes. Yeah, maybe that's related. Um, how do you pick your Z? Oh, okay, yes. Uh, how do you pick your, um, the zoom level depth? Um, so if you're generating your own tiles, uh, you just sort of pick a number that seems like it has the right level of precision. Um, there are sort of formulas for it, or tip a canoe will like happily guess a, an appropriate level. Um, you know, often it'll be like 11 or 12. In this case with the school boundary lookups, oh my God, because it's so important to some people, like literally, whether you live inside the school boundary or outside the school boundary could easily be like $200,000 worth of property value. Um, I actually got an email from someone saying they needed me to confirm that an individual house was inside a boundary um, because the site seemed to be giving them the wrong result and they were about to buy a house or take out a long-term lease or something. And at that point, no, I'm not going to say this. Okay. <laughs> um, you pick your zoom level really carefully. Um, that, that's, that's my, my answer. Um, but d does that affect the accuracy of your lookup? Uh, yeah, yeah, it will. Um, because it, yeah, if you pick a low zoom level, the tiles generate faster, the overall tile package is smaller, um, but you've simplified your, ge uh, your geometry slightly, and therefore lookups very close to the lines will occasionally be not what you would expect. But ask me for the rest of that anecdote later. <laughs> <laughs> Got a vector tiling system for polar regions? 
do I have a vector tiling solution for polar regions? Um, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head whether the Mapbox vector tile spec is explicitly restricted to only working um, in the EPSG 3857 Web Mercator system or whether I'm getting a, a kind of a, a yes. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like Lizzie would know what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, so no, I don't. Um, or as I like to say, that, that, that's an area ripe for exploration and innovation. <laughs> Oh, whatever. I can talk about it later. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Awesome.